back in the old days, back in the days of the Wild West, if somebody was a criminal, an outlaw, and they got in trouble in a particular jurisdiction, if they managed to escape the long arm of the law, it was not unusual for them to flee to another jurisdiction, another county, another state, another territory. And if they were bad enough that there were bounty hunters out looking for them, that there were wanted posters of them around, they would take on another name what today would be referred to as rebranding. Cults in the past have done this as well. There's one in particular that I can think of that started in Boston as the Boston Movement. Then because of their nefarious activities, or I should just, it was just abusive activities, the way that they abused their members they were run out of town, as it were, and moved to Florida at one point and renamed themselves the Crossroads Movement. And then the same thing happened to them in Florida, and they left town and they eventually ended up in California and renamed themselves again. And then their church split and one of them left California and moved somewhere else. I can't remember if it was maybe Nevada or Colorado or something like that. And, and they renamed themselves again. This kind of rebranding due to uh, uh, infamous activities is not unusual. Uh, the socialists in the United States did it all the time. They called themselves socialists, they called themselves progressives, they called themselves liberals, they called themselves social democrats. The reason that they do it is because eventually their name gets a bad connotation. The name gets a bad connotation because of their bad behavior, because of behavior that turns people off, that angers people and turns them off. And the left in the United States do this all the time, especially with the names of their movements. And they're doing it again with the term woke. The left because of the bad name that woke now has, largely because of the entertainment industry, because of woke movies, because of woke TV shows, and uh, maybe woke uh, music, I don't know, because I don't listen to that much of today's music unless it's, you know, in the uh, alternative or jazz or blues genre. I don't really listen to pop uh, these days. Uh, so I don't know, but, but probably in the music industry because when the left makes a philosophical push, they do it across the board and they usually use the entertainment industry to do it. Uh, and certainly, uh, woke academia, which is where usually all of these movements start. All of these movements typically start in academia for the left. And then it just filters out to the entertainment industry and, and, and so on into popular culture. Anyway, um, currently the term woke has a bad name. And if a movie, TV show, whatever, gets a reputation for being woke, people don't see it. People aren't going to go see it. Uh, this is a problem that Disney is having. Um, it's a problem that across the, across the uh, board.
board when it comes to the entertainment industry, but Disney specifically is having a big problem with it, especially now because they're starting to attempt to put out um, entertainment that is not specifically woke. And uh, people aren't watching it because Disney now has a reputation of being woke. And the left are now taking offense to this and they're, they're, they're suggesting that woke is a pejorative, that we, the right, have somehow, uh, that we invented and that we are using as, as the N-word, except uh, to describe their wokeness. Let me give you a quick history of woke, the word. It first appeared in 1942, or at least officially appeared in 1942, in the first volume of Negro Digest. It was written by R. Saunders Redding. Uh, he wrote an article on labor unions. It was then kind of adapted, arguably kind of adapted, by um, Martin Luther King in a speech in 1965, but he used the term awake. We must stay awake. And then throughout the 60s and even the 70s, it was used primarily by the black counterculture to refer to uh, knowledge that the man didn't want you to know about. And then it kind of just faded out of use until, ni uh, I'm sorry, 19, until uh, 2016. 2016, it resurfaced in the hands of BLM. BLM was searching for some things to give their very shallow Marxist movement some substance, and so they went back into the archives of the respected past of the black movement and found a term that they could hijack and that term was woke and it was to mean being aware of social justice issues and then because any movement nowadays uh, any minority movement nowadays, like Black Lives Matter, it isn't a black, about black lives, like the LGBTQ MOUSE movement, it's not about uh, that. It's all of these are movements that are uh, that are created by critical theory, Marxist critical theory, uh, and and um, they they couch it in terms of, of some kind of minor, oppressed minority. So, at any rate, now woke has been, it's gotten a bad name, and, and now they're trying to say, oh, we never used that term, and that's not us, and it's, it was invented by the right-wingers to say mean things about us and call us mean names. Yeah, no. Now, they've been using it actively since 2016. They have been using it to describe their own movement since 2016, and it, uh, it, it, it describes them and it describes their crap. So, there you go. Don't fall for it. Don't buy it. If they, if they try to distance themselves from it, you use this information that I just gave you and say, nope, you've been using this since 2016, and, and it's you. Stick it to them, folks. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you all later.